And for this one here, I'm going to likely turn off my camera just so that you guys can look fully at the screen. Um, so my background isn't a distraction to anyone. I've heard the, just the way that my headset works. Because of the gapping, it doesn't fully work like it's a green screen because I don't have a green screen. Uh, of course, it parted with it. Uh, so Hassan, if you go on to our YouTube channel, we do have like different playlists. So one playlist would be uh, webinars, for example. If you go to the main screen, it just kind of shows them and order as they're being added. So typically they're, they are either updates with respect to the agent locator system and the platform. Uh, we do have these webinars going up there. And then of course, every Tuesday, Thursday, we're doing the, the COVID chats and discussions with Addo. Um, those are also being posted on there as well. So I'm going to just share my screen here. And did I pick the right screen to share? I don't remember. So let me just do this again. There we go. Now I know I'm sharing the screen, the, the screen here. I am going to stop my video. go from there. Uh, so this is more or less if you guys are on lead gen or if you just have branded websites with us, uh, you can definitely take part in uh, email campaigns. Uh, it is a great way for some the system to help you leverage those leads that are in your system. Um, for first and foremost, uh, my thoughts on email campaigns and, and by all means, it's entirely up to you guys how you run your businesses. I find that um, it's always going to be more productive and have a be the better result if you're getting those people on the phone um, and having the email campaigns more or less complementary to that. I always kind of do the, the, you know, the bag to differ sort of scenario where when was the last time you responded personally to an email that you could tell was part of an email campaign. Um, so, and then not to mention if somebody does respond, you're still gonna have to call them. Um, so I always feel like get that out of the way or at least exhaust about five calls, depending on the, the, you know, the, the goal of your email campaign. If it's the goal to get somebody to respond to you, um, I'd say after about your fifth call, throw them on a drip. Um, everyone is different. Some of you may already have campaigns that, that work quite well. Um, so if they do work quite well for you, then you know, obviously you're not going to break that habit. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so so Hassan is saying uh, it would be great if you could have an in-depth email like stating all that you've said now, YouTube channels and learning media, et cetera. Uh, what's funny is I'm pretty sure we have this going out um, either today or <laughs> Or tomorrow, Hassan, there's actually going to be an email that goes out with all of those those replays for all of that on there. Um, and then there is the option on there as well to be able to subscribe on YouTube. Um, so funny you mentioned that. It is actually going out today. So with respect to the email campaigns in the agent locator CRM system, uh, some of you may have noticed that some say legacy and some say new user. Um, so I'm just going to find myself here. I'll just use this one here and look at the email campaigns in this section. Um, so we can see here when we have the campaigns, you have legacy campaigns and we have new user campaigns. I 100% recommend that you do not use legacy campaigns. These campaigns were built on our previous platform. Um, so you just don't have much, as much control over those campaigns as you do through the new system. You can't find leads on those campaigns easily. Um, so, and yeah. So I'm gonna throw myself just on one of these campaigns. So you all have this in each lead that you have. So if I throw myself on this campaign, it's gonna ask me, it's going to tell you that it is a legacy campaign. So if those emails go out, for example, um, I can force the entire campaign to go out, I can't, or yes, I can resume it. I can't force individual actions um, is, is what I'm getting at. So whereas the, the new workflow, for example, if I wanted to, I can force individual actions in that campaign to go out and stop individual actions and so on. 
Um, so when somebody gets added to this campaign, when they get one of those emails, all they, all you actually see in here is sent. It's always just going to say sent. You're never going to have this status change like you would on the new system where it's telling you if it's been delivered, if it's been opened, or if it's been clicked on. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit harder to see if these people are actually engaging in those emails. You definitely could through the legacy CRM system. You can see if they're opening it, but it just doesn't update here because they're two different platforms, um, needless to say. Um, so going into your campaigns and showing you with respect to a new campaign on the new user campaigns, I'm just gonna show you this campaign, for example. If I add it to the new user campaign, I can look at it and you can see how I can actually force this one email to go out. So I can actually force this to go out right away. So instead of following the rules of the campaign, I can shoot that off to that person right away. It also lets you see when it's actually gonna be scheduled to go out as well. You can also view the emails or view preview the SMS that's gonna go out just in case you forget exactly what your campaign consists of. Uh, in the buying lead campaign, you're not gonna have that option. You can't see anything with respect to those emails. You don't, you know, 100% memory in that, in that, in that sense of things. Um, so does that make sense to all of you guys with respect to the different kind of campaigns and how they're showing up in here? Uh, when you do have an email that goes out, if it does say, it'll say legacy right here. If it is a legacy email, you'll also see the status never changes. Um, it's always just going to say sent on there. Uh, so let's go to the home page because I just want to show you a couple features with respect to the campaigns in and, you know, regarding getting people on those campaigns. Uh, so some of you may have campaigns built out for sellers, for buyers, uh, for whatever it may be. You can now in here, if you're using the new system, uh, the current system here with respect to campaigns, you can actually find people that have, that are on a current campaign. So maybe I wanna see everyone that's on this open house campaign. I can apply that filter and see that these four people are currently on that campaign. I also can say has any selected. So any selected means, so there's three options. All selected means they have to have all these campaigns. Uh, any selected means if I select, for example, two campaigns, they can have either or. They don't have to have both of them, they can have one or the other. Or if they have none, I want everyone that does not have any of these campaigns assigned to them. Uh, so this is great if you if you have a campaign you want, you just created it, you can, you know, pull all the people up that have it. Um, so let's just pretend like, no, we don't want anyone that has these campaigns. Uh, so there's 118 people on, you know, that do not have these two campaigns. So if I wanted to, I can actually go over here, select all my leads and say, you know what, I want both of these leads on those campaigns. So I'm going to assign those leads to uh, a campaign. So I can mass assign leads to a campaign and then I select my campaign. All right, so I want all these leads on my open house, thank you for visiting campaign and go done. And it's gonna add all these leads automatically to that specific campaign for you. Um, so it's a great way to do things in mass objectives. Again, you cannot do that through the legacy. Now, uh, in the legacy, one of the biggest things that we do get uh, requests is there is that buying lead campaign. Uh, that buying lead campaign, and I'll just kind of go over it again, um, it right over here, if we go into the buying lead campaign and assign it right here, we're going to be able to see um, that it's just a series of email. The buying and why, why people tend to lean towards this is it's just a series of follow-up emails in an attempt to get somebody to respond. These emails were created quite a while ago um, and they were created by someone not you know, other than yourself. Um, so even if you were using these campaigns, 100%, you need to recreate those emails. Um, make it sound like something you would say to an individual. Um, and I'm gonna show you how you can actually recreate this email campaign in the system as well. Uh, so going over onto the left-hand side of your page, with any campaign, you're gonna wanna have your templates created first. Uh, it's just 
that much easier. Um, it also will allow you if, you, if you have an email as a template or an SMS as a template, it's going to allow you to, if you wanted to send it out one time, for example, if I just wanted to send myself one of those emails that I have included in my campaign, I would be able to do that. So for example, these are the emails here. I could then just send it out to myself and or whoever uh, as a one-time email rather than as part of a campaign. Uh, so most of you should probably know how to create templates, uh, but SMS templates are found right here. It's all under the gear, the settings tab. Uh, you can go in and add new templates. When you create new templates, you have short code, so short code is just drag and drop. This is gonna automatically replace the individual's first name. Um, so you do have uh, lead short codes. So these are all reflected of, of the leads information. You then have your information short code. Um, so the short codes for SMS and email are different slightly, especially with the agent short code. There is no signature option like you'd seen in email in here, so just be aware of that. If you try to use that on a text message, it'll come out saying signature. Probably not what you want. Um, your element basically replaces, if you were to say, for example, good, uh, just like this, and then a space. This one right here, if you drag and drop, what it's going to do is replace it with either morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on the time of day that that message is sent. Um, and then you would have the person's first name, for example, right after. So it would say, good morning or good afternoon, Crystal. Um, and then you can write the context of your, your text. Uh, these activity short codes are gonna be reflective of what the lead was doing on the website itself. Uh, my screen is frozen. Um, so basically, with respect to the activity short code, if I can get it to pop through here, it'll be, you know, with respect to what listings they looked at on the website. So the most viewed property type or the most viewed price point, things like that. So you can have the text message go out that looks like it's personalized toward what that individual is doing, uh, but it's, it's just the short code pulling based off their viewing activity on the website itself. Um, so I'm not sure why, there we go. Um, so now you have all these right here. Uh, so you can definitely create those, those campaigns uh, pulling based on what they're looking for in there. So you can save it. If you save it, you have the option of saving as a personal or company template. Uh, when you do this, this just means, you know, personal means it's personal to yourself. Um, so if you're part of a team or you're the team leader and you don't want anyone else, this is just a text that you want for yourself, you would create it as a personal. If you want anyone within your organization in your CRM uh, to have access to that template as well, you would create it as a company template. Then that way every, every user account underneath you would have access to it as well. Um, so same goes as for emails. So you would create your email templates here. Uh, so you can create new ones. Same idea where you have all the short codes. They are going to be slightly different with respect to, you know, the options for, for each of the um, commands, for, for example, but more or less same idea. Title is for your reference. The category is what category do you want that email to fall in or are you going to create a new category and then of course the subject and then you can create and compose your email here. Uh, this allows you to download images from your computer, uh, create hyperlinks and then you can adjust the format and so on and so forth. You can also have attachments in these as well. Uh, so one of the biggest things is again recreating that buyer's campaign. So you can actually pull up. So if, if you have those emails in here, we have the default buyer's campaign emails right here. Um, all of the emails are, are here and you can definitely edit them, which I 100% encourage you to do. Um, so if you just click on this edit button here, um, this is the, the email that would be for the listings. You do not need this because they already get that. So that was a bad example. Um, let me just default here, uh, better home search, for example. So let's just click on this one. Um, so as you can see, um, there is some short code in here. I would remove this campaign, for example, um, but really make this sound like yourself. Um, obviously, every area is different. What would you ask for somebody if, if you're asking that you know, from them? And the shorter the email, the better. Um, it seems more realistic. If you guys are creating these, like, 
you know, 900 word essays that you're writing out to these individuals, the likeliness that you actually created that email specifically for them is, you know, they're going to realize that's pretty slim to none. Um, so if you actually keep it short and simple and to the point, it seems a little bit more realistic and would more of an, you know, encourage that individual to actually respond to the emails. So once you do go in here and let's say you wanted to recreate this campaign and you wanted to just edit these emails um, you can go in so you can go subject a better home search uh, you can change that of course what the subject is uh, the buyers the title this you can change again it's for your reference so if you're building out the campaign you might say okay this is email one uh, email two email three so that when you're going to build that campaign they're easy to identify in there um, now, you guys do have access to several more email templates. I just wanted to let you guys know that not everyone is aware of that. Um, so a lot of you may have some buyer, you know, the default buyer's campaign in there, but that's, that's more or less it. Um, we do have some seller, seller emails, things like that as well. So you have all these. Again, you can edit all of them. How do you find those emails? So if you guys have a branded website with us, what you're going to do is you're just going to go into this gear right here and you're going to go into the training basic. If you don't have a website or your website obviously would be linked here, you just click on that. If you don't have a branded website, you guys are only on lead gen, what you could do is just go right here and go to crm.agentlocator.ca. Um, this is, do not go onto the new CRM, go right here and you're going to log in. It's the same login details as your, as the, this new CRM system. This is just going to bring you into the legacy system. Uh, so when you're in that legacy system, it again, this is use as needed kind of CRM. We don't need to uh, add a whole bunch of, um, or use it. It's not going to be as effective for you, needless to say. Um, but what you do is you go to the emails. And then you can go to email template right in here. And there's this little button right here that says install new emails. Uh, so when you click that, there's some different ones that are in here. So you have like seller emails, you can preview which those ones are. Um, and you can install all of them, for example, if you want to. Uh, you can, you know, um, I thought that you could select individual ones, maybe not. Oh yeah, you can. So you just click on the individual one if you wanna just install individual ones, you can. Um, so there is some just sold, just listed, open house ones that you can install. These are very basic, they will require editing 100%. And then you also have ones that are uh, special events. Um, so there's several birthdays, you know, Father's Day, Halloween, different things like that if you want to install those or pick which ones you want in there. Uh, this would, of course, you just replace it with your logo or you can delete it nonetheless. Uh, but that is how you would install all the additional emails that you may want to utilize when creating your campaigns in the system. Does anyone have questions on that? No questions? Perfect. So the next thing is we're going to want to build our campaigns, right? So once we created all our emails and have them, um, one thing I would do is if you're editing them, create a new category for it as well. It is just going to help you locate it. Um, so like new buyer campaign, new open house campaign, new seller campaign, things like that, that you're going to be able to differentiate from the existing ones in there. Uh, so Anna is just asking if I go through that install again. Uh, so again, in a, let me just see if there's another one. Uh, so Navita is asking if we can add a birthday date to the email. Unfortunately, you cannot. Uh, well, you could um, if you're customizing it for that person. So again, keep in mind when you create an email template, uh, if you go to a lead in your system and you want to send out that, that email, for example, um, you can just click on their email, right? And you select the template. So when you select a template, if you rename it, you can just go birthday, for example, um, start typing that what it is. You can still edit it while it's in here if you don't want that in there. Um, and then you can still add con like text to this. So if you want to include um, some information with respect, you know, it has this little thing, you have, you know, 
this little verbiage here where you can add to it. So if you wanted to throw their birthday in there, you definitely can. Um, I don't know why you would need to point out it's someone's birthday um, on their birthday, but it's, you know, aside from saying happy birthday, but you may, your intentions um, may be of what I'm not aware of. Uh, so yes, and we are going to go back. Um, so Bet is asking, are those emails in the old system also in the new one? Do they? So Bet, those those emails have to be installed. So the old emails from the old existing CRM have to be installed. There, in majority of cases, you guys are not going to see them in there. Um, but do a quick check, make sure that you don't have seller emails in there already. Um, you you never know; they may have been installed for you at some point. Um, and yes, Anna, we are going to go step by step with respect to going back. I was just answering a question uh, with respect to that. Um, Yes, yeah, so Navita, you can have it set up so that the email goes out on their birthday. If we have time, uh, we will go over that. That was one of the, the features or the topics that we're actually going to discuss on, on Friday was kind of just some of the advanced, like different things that you can do in your CRM system um, that you may not be aware of. <laughs> um, so with respect to, again, so just recapping how you guys are getting to those installed emails. Um, so if you do not have a branded website with Agent Locator, you're going to go to crm.agentlocator.ca. And then you're just going to log in here with the same login details that you have for this CRM system. If you have a branded website, you can just click right here, this compassy looking thing, and click onto your website link. And that's gonna pull you into the legacy CRM system automatically. From there, you're gonna go to the email, then email templates, and then you're gonna click on install new emails. Um, so right here is where you're gonna install them. If you wanna click on it, you can install all of them. Or if you want to select a certain one and kind of see what it is before, you can install them individually as well. Um, okay, so you can do that for each of those, those categories, nonetheless, uh, showing in there. Um, so hopefully that helped you guys out. Um, so build in the campaign again. So now you kind of quote unquote, you guys have your emails created. Now, the one thing that's great about Agent Locator in the campaigns is that it doesn't just have to be email. Um, so your campaigns can actually can consist of emails, SMS, tasks for yourself, as well as you can have one of the uh, items in your email campaign automatically assign that person to another campaign should you wish to do so. Um, so you once you've created a campaign, you can definitely edit that campaign. So you can continue building that campaign over time if you need to. Uh, please note if you are building it out, anytime you add to that email um, campaign, if it's already assigned to somebody, they don't get the updated version. They stay on the current version. It would just be for the new people that you're assigning to that campaign. Now you're going to basically just click on create new to create a new campaign in here. And uh, now you're gonna give your campaign a name. Uh, so what the name is obviously what you're gonna to refer to that campaign as in here. Uh, you can also clone campaigns as well. So if you have an existing campaign that you just want to kind of mimic, maybe they, it just changes slightly just depending on you know, one factor or another, you definitely can do that. Um, these are uh, system campaigns. These are the ones if you're on lead gen where those auto texts go out. Uh, these are those, you know, text messages essentially that are going out with respect to that. Um, uh, Navita is asking if there's monthly, monthly newsletter, which we can add in the campaign. Navita, no, we do not have newsletters auto created in this uh, CRM system. You can definitely create. Uh, newsletter, but your campaign, as mentioned, once you've added it to somebody, um, it won't automatically add that new. So if you keep adding emails to that campaign, if you've added me to that campaign, let's say two weeks ago, and you just did another added to addition to that campaign today, I wouldn't receive that addition, only the new people that you assign. Um, so if you are doing newsletters, create it as a template and send out a mass email. Um, if you want to, you know, have, if you have a template that perhaps you'd like to use, you could always email support 
um, see if they can recreate that that newsletter template for you there may be a cost associated with it it just depends on how complicated uh, that can it's going to be for them to create that template and then basically every every month you just update the template you just change you know the content and the images and things like that and they would likely give you a tutorial on how to go over uh, that essentially um perfect um so alicia this is i've already gone over twice now how to do those emails this is being recorded as mentioned so you'll be able to receive a copy of it um you can go on the youtube it'll likely be there either tomorrow or go on the facebook group uh the recording or the live video is on there streaming um so it's typically saved in the facebook group as well so you can watch it at any time um, so, so again, kind of going back, you can clone those campaigns um, or you can, if you wanted to recreate. So we're going to show you at the end of this how to, a lot of you guys want those text messages that are going out to your leads when they first register, how to change those text messages uh, that go out. So we'll go over that as well, or how to automatically assign a lead to a campaign upon registration. Um, so anytime there's automatic assignment, just as a side note, you do need to be on the automated system. Um, there is some, in our system, how the orders are created and the automation is all reflective of which products you have um, in here. So if, if you're not on an automated website of any sort, you will not be able to auto assign incoming leads to a campaign. You would have to manually assign them. So just keep note of that. Um, so when you are creating a campaign, um, let's just create this as testing one, two, three. You have two options. You have a relative date or a fixed date campaign. Relative date is relative to when you assign that lead to the campaign. And then a fixed date is means there's a fixed date for that action. So a good example of this and, and what I tell people is like a holiday campaign. Um, for example, Halloween always falls on the 31st. So you set the date of the 31st for that specific email to go out. Um, now, at this time, you have to pick relative or fix. You can't have a combination of both uh, for a single campaign. Now, what's also cool is you do have stopping clauses for your entire campaign. Uh, stopping clauses are basically what's going to trigger this campaign to stop. Um, so this was, when this was first released, one of my favorites, because I would add people to a campaign and then forget to take them off of it. Uh, and it can be embarrassing, especially when something goes out. It's like, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. And they're like, we just spoke the other day. I imagine I'm part of a campaign of some sort. Um, so this is all is going to work for you to automatically stop a campaign. So if you have this campaign, for example, and the goal of this campaign is to, to, to turn that pipeline into made contact, you can have it so this entire pipe, this entire campaign stops if the pipeline is made to make contact with their set meeting or, or sold or showing or any of those kind of things. So it just automatically stops for you. You don't have to worry about stopping it. Um, the same goes for tags. So if you automatically apply a specific tag to somebody, it would automatically stop that campaign from going. Now, one thing that I do is you can have the stopping clauses on the entire campaign. You can also have them on the individual actions themselves. So it's entirely up to you. I like the individual actions because it just allows you to skip, it keeps the campaign going. It just allows you to skip over an email or an SMS, that sort of thing. So I'll go over that in a moment. You will also have the ability to include silent hours. Uh, silent hours means that the campaign does not run during specific times. So if you have, uh, let's say you're, you have this on an automatic assignment, so a lead comes in, they automatically assign to this campaign. Um, if they were, let's say, the first action of your campaign was an SMS message, and that lead registered at three o'clock in the morning, um, probably don't want your automatic text message going out, you know, at three o'clock in the morning. Um, so you would have silent hours from the evening uh, let's say what time you want to stop sending auto messages out of any sort, whether it's emails or SMSs, and then what time it would begin again. Um, so typically you would have it, uh, well, everyone has different hours that they decide that they 
just don't want to work with online leads um, or just re responding to people from auto campaigns, um, but you can set that. We are doing an update. I believe it's pushed for Wednesday. Um, so this, this is 24 hour currently. As of Wednesday, you're going to have an AM PM option. Uh, for some, that might be easier for you to kind of do the math on or execute. Uh, you will also have the option to execute on business days only. So if you only want campaign actions and things like that to go out only on business days, you definitely can do that as well. Um, so I am just going to leave both of those and click save. Um, so once you create like the generic rules for that campaign, uh, you can then start building out your campaign. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is click on this plus sign right here and choose which action you want. So let's pretend this is an SMS that I want to go out. So let's pretend this lead registered and maybe it's for a seller lead, for example. Um, or a buyer, doesn't really matter. Um, so this global first response, when you see that these are the text messages that are created when, you know, for that um, auto, that leads come in, those text messages that go out. Um, but let's just say, let's not help yet. Pretend it's this one here. So demo requested, this is obviously, they don't see this. This is just for your references only. It has the text message here. Once you're in here, you can definitely change this. So once you've selected it, you're not stuck with that. You can continue to edit this a little bit further if you want to adjust the verbiage at all. You definitely have that ability to do so. Now, you also have the option as to who that message is coming from. So if you're a team, let's say, and you have other agents and or mortgage agents with you, who is this text message coming from? Uh, most will have it coming from the main agent assigned, but you can definitely have it coming from another person that also is assigned to that lead as well. And then here you have is those automatic stopping clauses. So um, what would have to happen in order for this text not to go out um, and sent? So maybe it's a new lead. Um, I don't want this text to go out because maybe it's about somebody registering and I'm going to get a hold of them or something. I don't want that to go out if I've you know, already made contact or set up an agreement with that person. Um, again, just depends on when they registered and, and how quick you were to call them or how long after they registered again this message. Um, so you do have that. Um, and then you have the delay period. Um, so the delay period is how long after somebody gets assigned to this campaign does this text message go out? So let's pretend we want it to go out five minutes after somebody registers, let's say, and they're automatically assigned to this campaign, or five minutes after I've manually assigned them to this campaign. Uh, so then you go there and you would select that one there. Uh, we do have a question. Uh, the SMS function is, you do have the ability to use the SMS function. So um, the question was asked, it's only available on the unbranded sites. Anyone with the CRM system can add the SMS feature in here. Um, it's just the automation aspect of those leads, um, essentially, that, that doesn't work unless you have the automatic, the automated website. Um, but anyone can use the SMS feature in here. Uh, so once you've built that out and you saved it, it goes out five. We're just going to update that. Um, so you're able to see this SMS here. So if you wanted to go back and edit it, uh, you can, or the rules. Uh, now, again, you can have these, these silent hours for the specific actions as well. It's not just limited to the entire campaign itself. Um, now, from here, we're going to build on our second one. Right, so this is where you can then, let's say we wanna throw an email in, and this is where it's so much more useful to be able to you know, have those, those emails created first. Uh, you can definitely pull, so again, if you're building out that buyer's campaign, uh, you can definitely use that. Now, I wouldn't use any of these short codes that say campaign, um, so I would always you know, edit that for sure. Just because it, again, this was related to the legacy system original, it might come out saying campaign, and we wouldn't want that to happen. Um, so again, you have the context of that email there. You can only edit the text in this. So if you had images or anything like that as part of that email, you would have to go into 
um, over here into your email to, to edit that actual thing. You can only edit the text in here. You wouldn't be able to add any images or anything like that. Um, so again, once you're in here, you have the ability to select who that email is coming from. Any, any stopping clauses specific to this email. Um, so let's say maybe this email is a buyer's campaign and it was all about pre-approval. Now let's pretend we've already talked to this lead and we added a tag to them that they've already been pre-approved. I don't know if I have this in here or not. I don't think I do. Um, but let's say it was they've already got the tag pre-approved. Um, so the stopping clause on, on this specific email would be that pre-approved. We don't need to send them an email about gaining pre-approval when we know they've already been pre-approved. So in that sense, it would just skip over this email and then we continue on to the rest of the, the scheduled emails. Um, and in that case, again, if you guys work closely with any mortgage, mortgage agents and things like that, you can have them as a user account in your system 100%. And you could have an email such as pre-approval actually come out from the mortgage agent that you've assigned to that lead. Um, so it's kind of cool that way. Now, again, you do have the delay period. So this delay period, again, so this delay period is going to be from the previous action. Okay, so how many minutes or days or hours, for example, you have different, uh, different options here. After this action, will this email go out? Um, so maybe we want this to go out, you know, two days after that. It's just confirming they got the listing, essentially. And then we can save that to go out. So now we have, so five minutes after you assign that person to the campaign, they get the SMS. To, and then two days after that SMS, they're getting this email. Um, now you can also create tasks in here as well. So if you wanted to create a task, um, in here as part of a drip. So I've seen people create these campaigns and they are 100%, all they are is tasks. They are just checklists. So they might have a buyer's checklist for a new buyer client or a seller's checklist for a new listing, um, things like that. So you can definitely get creative with those as well. Um, and again, of course you have stopping clauses. So it'll just stop creating the tasks in the system for you. Um, so when you are creating a task in here, you can give, you have to give a title and a description. Um, it doesn't allow you to, to move forward unless you have both. Now you can also select the priority level. Um, you can also choose who this task gets assigned to. So just because you're assigning the campaign does not mean that you get the task. Um, so you can select, you select who's actually going to be assigned that task, the initial status of the task, and the delay of that. And I usually have this as zero as to the delay of that task. Now again, stopping clauses and then the delay period from the campaign, the previous uh, email. So let's say we want this one to go out, um, let's say three, three days after that one, just as for example purposes. Um, so now you have three actions on here. Now you can definitely um, auto assign these. So before we go into any kind of auto assigning, does anyone have any questions as to building the campaign in general? Does it all make sense to you guys? It seems relatively easy. You got all the emails. It's just adding them in there. What's great about this is in most cases, you just set it and you forget it, right? You don't have to keep worrying about it over and over again unless you have something new. Uh, but you can get quite creative with campaigns um, in here. Now, automatic assignment. Um, so automatic assignment is what's going to automatically assign this campaign to a lead. Um, now, again, for the automatic assignment, you guys do have to have um, the lead gen site, the automated system. Sorry, I was reading a message on Facebook. Um, Witty on Facebook is asking, um, are there options for voice blast? And unfortunately, no, um, there isn't. Um, and so what I think he means by that is, an automatic voice message that if I, if correct me if I'm wrong, right, Witty, but you know the, how you can also me ask the phone and it's a voice message, it's somebody sending you a message. Um, I think that's what he's asking, but no, I don't. Uh, it does not do that, unfortunately. Uh, we don't have that option in here. Um, but aside from that, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. So automatic assignment. Oh, you might have another, another one. 
So Navita is asking, can we set up a campaign for a group? Um, so Navita, what do you mean by that specifically? I don't know, I'll wait for her to answer. Um, so the automatic assignment is, is based on what, what has to happen for this lead to automatically be assigned to the campaigns. Now, please do note, um, this is based on at the time of registration. So automatic assignment at this very moment only applies to leads that are entering your CRM system. Um, so if they're an existing lead and you change the source, for example, they're not going to be automatically assigned to this campaign at this time. This is something that we are working on. It's, it is a, a pretty, because um, I've, I've, I've put in requests, it's, it's not a, just a quick and easy you know, change. It's quite significant. Um, uh, so from Navita, so she had that question, can we set up the campaign for a group? Uh, one campaign can be assigned to different tags, for example, first time home buyer. Um, well, yes, so it would have to be at registration though, Navita. So it, it can't be that you apply the tag, which is, is one of the requests that I've put in. If you apply a tag, it automatically throws them on that campaign. That is something that we will be working on. It's just, it's a, it's a, it's a very complex um, programming for, for our developers to do, so it's not a quick change, uh, but they are doing it so that if, if you change the source or change the lead type um, or change the tag, that it would essentially automatically throw that person on the campaign. So that is something that is in the works. Um, it, it could be a while before it actually gets released though. So again, if you have, let's say a Facebook campaign, um, and a Facebook campaign, you get to include a tag. So when a lead comes in, so let's say you're running a Facebook campaign using the lead forms and the Facebook integration in here, um, that lead automatically comes in with a tag, first time buyer, then yeah, they would automatically be assigned to this campaign. Um, so you can't save, yeah, so yeah, so that, if that makes sense. Um, uh so Hassan is asking can we customize the campaign for each lead through though moderately amending um so the automatic assignment so what you could do Hassan so again when the email campaign is assigned to that individual you can't really modify it at that time um, you would only be able to look at the emails that are scheduled to go out and you can stop specific emails uh, from going out, but you wouldn't be able to modify it on the spot um, for that individual. Um, you can only stop those campaigns and we can look at that together and 100% we will see it and make sure that I'm not telling you info that is not correct uh, with respect to that. Uh, we can go over, if we have time to be to the, the Facebook campaign, um, not like actually setting up the campaign. If we have time, we'll see. We have 20 minutes left, um, so we will see if we can actually go. We have time for that today. Um, so again, back to automatic assignment. So basically the store. So if you have something, let's say, maybe this is a campaign that's for sellers. And so in that case, maybe anyone that kind of came in off of the street match source off your branded website, um, or let's say you have a Facebook campaign and it was something to do with sellers in um, wherever, if they came in with a specific source, they would automatically be assigned to that campaign. Now you can have double rules or triple rules having more to them. I don't encourage too much because you don't want one to prevent the other if you have too many, too many rules and just make sure your tags are not your stopping clauses. Um, so some, I've seen some campaigns where, you know, they have the automatic assignment and they have the tags here. And then when I looked at the campaign itself, um, I noticed that those were also stopping clauses. So the campaign would never run. It would just go in a circle. It'd be like a sign stop sign stop uh, that sort of thing so 
Um, you can do that. If you don't want to pick just sources, let's say you want anyone that enters your system with the lead type of home seller, for example, doesn't matter how they entered your CRM system, whether they came in through a Facebook campaign, whether they came in through um, that a landing page on your branded website, maybe you created a landing page through the landing page creator um, for those leads to come in as sellers as well. Um, same idea, they come in as a specific lead type, automatically assigned to this campaign. Uh, and then you can also have it so that tags are, you know, in addition to, so maybe they have to have a seller and maybe this is a campaign for home sellers that have to do with luxury properties. For example, that campaign may be slightly different than, you know, marketing condos, uh, for example. Um, so you can have it so that the seller and the specific tag, they get assigned to this campaign um, and so on and so forth. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. Again, if you guys do ha set up a campaign, I tell everyone this, set up a campaign, sh shoot me an email, I'd be happy to look at it, make sure that it is going to be working for you. Um, yeah, that there's nothing that's gonna contradict. Uh, sometimes having a separate eye and asking questions, you know, bouncing back kind of at you um, makes things, you know, a little bit more clear for, for everyone. Um, so update. Once you have that, and that's your automatic assignment. Okay, so now any lead that comes in as a home seller would automatically be assigned this campaign. Now I can even test it out for you and just kind of show you in here. And I just need to find the training, I think it's Training Basic, um, is what it is. Training Basic. Okay, apparently it's not just gonna pull it up for me. Uh, let me just go into here and pull it that way. So now if I create a lead on here, I'm looking for a seller lead because I did my automatic assignment based on seller leads. I'm just making sure that is correct. Um, so a seller lead would be somebody that fills out your home worth page, right? Street match is a street match lead um, and so on and so forth. Um, so I'm just gonna go one, two, three, any, whatever, it doesn't really matter. And now I have to create an account that does not already exist. And this is gonna be the tricky part. So crystal plus three, two, one, at auto. And doesn't really matter. And we're gonna get the home evaluation. Oh, I, it won't accept my one, two, three. Darn it. Uh, we'll just do two L's. I know that it's not gonna work. Okay. Perfect. So now that I've created the lead, the lead should be in here. And we can see that the lead, so this lead came in, so we just filled it out. We can see that the lead type was home seller. So that was the rule for the automatic assignment. And we can see that the email campaign has already been added to this lead. And then if we click on that lead, you're gonna be able to see the actions, right? So again, you can see when they're done. Uh, if you wanted to preview that SMS again, you can't edit it in here. So that was kind of our, or thing to see if you can edit that email, but unfortunately you cannot edit the email once it's part of that campaign. And you can schedule like the, you can force it to go out. So if I wanted this one to go out, I can definitely force this to go out. Uh, one thing that you guys can do, um, as well as assign yourself to a campaign, so create yourself as a lead, you can actually force the entire campaign to go out at once. Um, this would only be for like testing purposes, for example. Um, but if I force this right now, it would actually force the entire campaign. Every action is going to be completed. Um, it's just going to go boom. Um, so this is something to to kind of watch as well. I've seen people do this and like, oh my gosh, I just sent every single email to everyone. Um, they put force campaign on the entire campaign, which basically, as I mentioned, uh, forces everything. So we can see here that this one here, it's executed. This one's still scheduled. Um, I don't know why, if it has to do 
the email or the phone number, that sort of thing. But yeah, so just be wary of the force on the entire one. So if you do force, it's gonna shoot out all those emails all at once, which you probably don't wanna happen. Um, so if you wanna force actions, make sure you expand the campaign and force individual actions one at a time, rather than all of them. Um, it will try to, it might not be working because I've got a, yeah, I've got an invalid, completely invalid number. It's not even, not even trying to send the text, I guess. Um, so I hope that makes sense to you guys. Now, a lot of you have the question of the automated lead gen system and updating those SMS messages um, or adding more SMS or emails to those campaigns and so on and so forth. Um, so what you're going to do in that sense is, again, you're going to go back to your campaign template editor. Um, you can create a brand new one um, if you want to and, and kind of go through those steps. Or you can just clone that campaign and modify it, right? So entirely up to you um, if you want to build out all your, your brand new SMS um, messages or just kind of clone and have the base of it. So let's just pretend I wanted to do that and then I clone it. Now, when you clone it, if you wanted to edit this, it doesn't allow all these like special characters if you do it, you can definitely change it. Um, now, the way our current is set up is this first message, um, actually, let me just backtrack. They have the entire campaign with stopping clauses. Okay, which means that it, none of these messages will go out if you've made contacts, set meeting, showing, all that stuff. I personally like to take those off because I'd rather have the stopping clauses on the individual actions. Um, you will want to put your silent hours in, definitely because these are SMS messages. You don't want to, you know, be texting somebody at three o'clock in the morning. Um, so do put your silent hours in and then update it. And so as you can see, it only allows certain, you can't have uh, the brackets in here. So I'll just change it as new and then update that. Now again, with the SMS messages, so these are the default settings. So five minutes after a lead registers, they get your first message. And then one day after that first sec message, they would get your second message. Um, so this is where you can edit it. So if you wanted to update this a little bit, do not shoot yourself in the foot um, with what you're asking the lead. Um, so it's always good to acknowledge your lead, let them know that you're gonna take and thank them and let them know you're gonna do something for them, and then ask a question and attempt to generate a response of some sort. Um, but don't ask the question, can I give you a call later? Um, if they say no, then you can never call that person, right? So just be careful with, with what you ask them. Um, again, you wanna to try to get a response, but don't shut the door on yourself, basically. Um, so again, that message. Now with this specific first message, what I would do, is have the pipeline statuses. So this first message does not go out, let's say, if, if I've made any of these, right? So if I called that lead within the five minutes and actually made contact with them, the SMS wouldn't go out or if they've moved them to garbage because I came in and they've, you know, they've got bad info, um, that sort of thing. I would put the stopping closet on each individual one um, and then you kind of, then you would update that. And then the second one, so how our second one works is this one doesn't go out if you've made contact with the lead, right? So this is where I monitor because the second one is really just checking to see if they've received the email and it confirms their email, right? So I send it to your email and this is the short code for email. So it puts their email there. Leads, if, if they really want the listings, they're gonna, they're gonna correct you if their email is invalid. Um, they will say, oh, my email is actually this or whatever it may be, right? It could be a simple error that's in their email that, that they didn't realize is there. Um, so again, I like, so modify this, obviously, like it's, it is what it is, but I would want this to go out whether or not I spoke to somebody. So even if I spoke to you today or I didn't speak to you today, the following day, I would still want this email to go out because even if I spoke to you, it's just confirming that they got the email. Okay, really is all it is. Um, so in this case, I wouldn't have the stopping clauses for, for these ones here. I would just have it for, a, for like sold, which is likely not gonna happen in a day, um, or if they're garbage, right? Then that, then that text doesn't go out. 
um, and then update that. Now again, the automatic, so this is two steps. So when you're assigning a lead um, with respect to this, this campaign, so when a lead comes in through that automated lead gen site, and these are the initial text messages that they get, um, two things have to happen, okay? So you have to remember to do both of these things. Um, the first thing that you need to do is automatically assign, right? So um, you would find your lead gen site, whatever the URL is, and it's the source. So anyone that comes in off that lead gen website, the source is this, you're gonna update that, okay? Now the second step that you have to do, and you can do this before, you can do this after, but you have to do it, is going up here into your user profile, into your user preferences, and then down at the bottom, yours is usually going to be on one of these, okay? You have to turn it to nothing selected. Okay, because this is automatically how it's set up. So when the leads come in, they're automatically thrown on this campaign um, through default through our system. So you have to turn it off. And then over here on the right hand side, just make sure you save it. Um, because if you leave it on and you have yours, it's it's gonna create a mess of things. Either it's it's gonna like send two messages out or nothing will go out, or you just confuse the entire system because it's set to this, it's set to this, and and yeah. Um you don't want to have two messages going out at the same time saying two different things to a lead, right? That would just not look so great. Um, so does anyone have any questions about that? Automatically assigning, um, recreating those SMS messages or getting so incoming leads that are coming through, they're, they're modified and things like that. Do you guys have any questions surrounding that? No? We're good? Perfect. So I'm just going to briefly touch base, Navita, on the Facebook. Um, I'm not sure, are you looking for Facebook from the CRM standpoint? Or is it from the actual Facebook side of things? Okay, from the CRM. Okay. Or let's just make sure. Yes, yeah, CRM. Okay. So for any of you guys, if you're on the automated system, one thing that's great is that you, Facebook is, is a great way to generate leads um, through, through Facebook campaigns. Um, so Witty is asking, sorry Witty, I, I missed your question on Facebook there. Um, so Witty is asking, can this be connected to third party websites? Um, so yes, generally it can. Uh, depends on that third party website. Um, Sometimes they have what we call as a parsing email. So in your system, for anyone that is curious, um, your parsing is basically this feeds email. It's, it's just this random email that's associated with your account. Um, so basically what you would do with you is this, that CRM or that website, um, you can CC this. So if a lead creates on that website, so maybe they fill out their contact information, their first, last name, phone, and email. Um, if you CC this email on new lead alerts, it will automatically feed those leads into this CRM system. It'll be their basic information, just their first, last name, phone, and email. Um, you can then set them up on various campaigns or what have you from there. Um, just email support um, and they will, they'll help you. So if it can't be done that way, they're, they may be able to do it through Zapier. Um, so just reach out to them and then they can look into it for you. Um, so back into the Facebook campaigns, uh, it's really quite simple um, to create a Facebook integration um, in here. So again, you're running a lead campaign. So this is an advertising, you have to go into your ad manager on Facebook and you have to set up an ad campaign, which is the leads campaign, because you need to create one of those leads forms on your Facebook. Um, and then basically um, any lead, so if you guys are on Facebook and you click like interested or learn more and a form pops up, that's, that's a campaign on Facebook that's using the leads form. Um, so what it does is it feeds those leads instantly into your agent locator CRM. Um, so the first thing you're gonna do is add your account. Um, so if you add your account here, um, you have to make sure you select the pages. Um, you can, so just to kind of show you guys, um, I'll just refresh mine in here. Oh. We'll just see it. Okay, 
let me just do that again because apparently I have to edit just so that you guys can see. So edit settings, you would have to select the pages that that you have on here um, that you would want to include in this integration um, and the forms that they have. So once you've done all that, you just click next, you make sure you give them all of the permissions and then go done um, in there. Um, and so then once you're done, you're done that. So then you're just adding your integration. Okay, so the integration more or less is, is quite simple. Um, if you're creating it, you're gonna select the page, right? So let's pretend this one here. I don't have any forms left, so it won't actually let me. So you can only use one form one time with each integration. So you can't use that same form you're using on Facebook several different times. Um, so let's see if there is one on this one here. So he does have a couple buyers in Mississauga, let's say. So this is the form that he has. Um, so anyone that fills out this form you have saved on Facebook would automatically be entering in the CRM. Now you just need to do your CRM setup. So when that buyer or person fills out the form, what kind of lead type are they gonna be? Um, so in this case, this is obviously a buyer's in Mississauga, so we're gonna say they're a home buyer. Now, the source of the lead. Um, now, sources can be created here. So you cannot create them once you're in here. So if you are doing Facebook stuff, um, you can create your sources here, so just right here. Um, and some will do just a generic Facebook and, and identify them through tags. Um, others will do like the Facebook ads and then, for example, Mississauga buyer. So the source actually indicates which campaign on Facebook this is from. Uh, you then have your tags again. Um, so if you have have that, then you can definitely um, doesn't. I don't think I have a a Mississauga one. No. Nope. So let's just pretend it's an investment buyer. Um, so when that lead comes in, they're going to be automatically assigned home buyer. This is the source of the lead that's going to show up on lead, and this is the tag that's automatically going to be assigned to that lead. Now you can select multiple tags, just so you guys are aware. Now you can have it so that the system automatically sends listings to these leads. Um, so right here, there's a little toggle, yes or no, it defaults to yes. Now you need to tell the system what listings to send to this person. Um, so you select the city. So in this case, it would be Mississauga, you just type it out. And then let's just say you are doing a campaign that is, you know, homes, you know, family homes in Mississauga priced under 800,000, let's say. So in that case, we're not including condos because most families don't live in condos um, or they're looking for a home. I'm just stereotyping here, but um, <laughs> so you'd have row houses, uh, maybe a townhouse, maybe a detached, uh, maybe a duplex, I don't know. Um, you then have like the semi-detached and so on. So they would get up set up to receive this type of home. Uh, we have to make sure you select your lead gen website, of course. And you can even specify specific neighborhoods. So if you target a specific area, maybe you do farming um, in certain areas, you can actually have it so that they only get listings in that specific area right, in that neighborhood. So you would type them out, TREB communities, not community-derived community names. Um, so what TREB actually refers to them as. Um, so they'll be comma-separated, no spaces, okay, if you're doing that. Uh, then you have the min price and max price. So let's say, you know, if it was under 800, I'm gonna have the max price of 800,000. Right, so once you have that, I like to always just put one just to be on the safe side, so I always have a min and a max. Um, so once somebody fills out your Facebook form, they're automatically going to come in as a home buyer with a source Mississauga buyers. They're going to have the tag investment buyer, and they're going to automatically receive listings in Mississauga that are detached, townhouse, semi, so on and so forth, um, priced between $1 and $800,000. Um, so then you can just go ahead and you can save that. You then just need to test that on Facebook, um, basically, to make sure that if somebody fills out that form, they're going to be automatically added to that campaign. Okay, so how we can test that out, and we'll see if we can 
do that. Now, when these work as well, so if you're doing a stellar campaign, for example, and um, maybe it's about a new listing you have, right? So maybe that person, you have an automatic assignment to a campaign. So as soon as they register, they are signed to your email campaign that you created with the listing information and all that fun stuff, uh, but then also get set up on listings of similar priced properties in that exact same neighborhood. Um, so if you guys are kind of trying to piece that together, just reach out. I'm happy to look at it for you. Um, typically, you just have to do it once and then you should be okay. Uh, we like to create videos for you guys so that it makes it a little bit easier for you. Um, so now I just need to test out my page. Um, and I have to find my page. It's still loading. And... Where is my pages? Mm, I need my testing one. So it's this one right here. That's where the form was created. And you can go to publishing tools. And the publishing tools is where your forms are. Okay, so basically when you have your forms, they're all here. Um, so I'm gonna go to my forms library. There's my buyers in Mississauga. Um, I'm gonna preview this form. Um, so I'm going to create this as, again, when you are testing on Facebook, you have to make sure if you're doing this, um, the email isn't already in your CRM system because that's how the system checks for duplicate is through email. Um, so I'm gonna do this as three, two, one um, in here. Go next. So this is just testing out my form. I'm gonna go submit. And let's just see if it's in here. Nope, I must have used that email somewhere. Where is my form? So let me try this again. Cancel. I need to Oh, you know why? Because there's two buyers in Mississauga forms. I need to figure out which one it was. It's probably the other one. So let's test the other one. Cancel. I don't know which one I did. Nope. Painful to watch, guys, I know. I'm refreshing it because it's going to tell me if a lead was already created in there as well. So preview, so I have to do that. And it was Oh, I don't want that one. This one. Okay, let's try this one first. I'm gonna delete the lead. Preview the form. Okay, that time it worked. Got my ding. Okay, so there we go. We got that lead that created. So we created that integration. So right here we have the lead. We put that investment buyer tag on them. They were the lead type home buyer. They came in from that Facebook ads, Mississauga buyers. And they're automatically set up to receive listings. So the price points are already one to 800,000. Uh, we can see that there's the search created, so it shows right here. Now, this is really fast. So I've already received my account of activation email and the listing. So if somebody fills out your form on Facebook, it is like instant. They get those listings instantly into their CRM system. Um, so um, hopefully that helps you guys with respect to that. It was just a little quick update on the Facebook. 
Um, either myself or Nadim could definitely look, and Nadim is our Facebook guy, so if you are creating any of those Facebook campaigns and you just need to double test um, or have a look at it, by all means, uh, we'd be happy to check out, make sure that your forms, um, everything is set up as it should be. I know Nadim is creating like step-by-step -step, um, like workbooks webinar kind of series like right from the beginning um, of everything Facebook um, to help you guys out. So if you guys have any questions, otherwise we've gone over a little bit here. Um, and again, as you guys build out any campaigns, uh, with respect to your intentions of the campaign, if you're if you're just struggling a little bit um, or just need a second set of eyes, just reach out. I'm you know here to help. I'd be happy to take a look at your campaign, make sure that it looks like it would run smoothly. Uh, and you can also you know if you are doing the automatic assignment, just create yourself as a lead on the website, um, sign in as that source again using alternate uh, email addresses. Of course, it doesn't necessarily have to be valid. You just want to see if it's automatically assigning that person to the campaign. So. Um, thanks, you guys, for watching, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to shoot them over. It's crystal at agentlocator.ca, um, and happy Monday, and we'll see you guys hopefully on Friday. Thanks for watching.